As Wendell continued his experiments, he was mainly focused on how a single trait was inherited in pea plants. For example, he considered only the height of the plant, tall or dwarf, or only the seed color, or only the seed texture, etc. After performing many experiments on how single traits were inherited, he began to wonder what would happen if two traits were being inherited at the same time. How would that look like? How would the offspring look like? So to understand how two traits were inherited at the same time, Mendel decided to perform a specific type of cross. The cross involved two types of plants. One was a homozygous plant that was tall and produced green seeds and another was a homozygous plant that was short and produced yellow seeds. This is considering that tall trait is dominant over dwarf trait and green seed color trait is dominant over yellow seed color trait. So he knew that this plant would only produce this gamete and this plant would only produce this gamete. In the F1 generation, all plants would have this genotype that was heterozygous and because tall trait and green seed traits are dominant over dwarf traits and yellow seed traits, all plants in the F1 generation would be tall and green seed color producing. So this is what he observed in the F1 generation. Now it was a little tricky when it came to the F2 generation because Mendel didn't know if these two traits were inherited together like how it is here or if it were inherited separately. So to understand that he crossed two of such plants, two such heterozygous plants he self-crossed them and with whatever result he obtained, he was able to formulate the law of independent assortment which is what we are going to learn in today's video. So here Mendel had two hypotheses. One was that the traits were inherited together or in other words, the inheritance of the traits were dependent on one another and the other was that the inheritance of the traits were independent of one another. So first let's start with the scenario of the traits being dependent on one another. If the traits are independent on one another or if they are inherited together, then for this plant also, the gametes that are formed would be just this and this, like the parent plant. And if we were to draw a Punnett square depicting this cross, then this would be the genotypes of the offspring. And the phenotypes would be tall, green, tall, green, tall, green and dwarf, yellow in the ratio 3 is to 1. But this is not what Mendel observed when he performed this cross, leading him to abandon this hypothesis that the traits were dependent on one another. Then he proposed that the traits were inherited independent of one another. Now what does that mean, independent of one another? Consider this genotype, the inheritance of this trait for tallness or plant height basically has nothing to do with the plant's inheritance of its seed color trait. So if the plant is inheriting this allele for tallness, then the plant inheriting either this capital G or small g, whether it is green seed color or yellow seed color, that has nothing to do with whatever height trait is inherited, which means that the inheritance of one trait is independent of inheritance of another trait. Inheriting one of these traits has no effect on inheriting the other trait. So this T, capital T, can combine with this capital G to form one gamete. It can combine with this small g to form another gamete. The small t similarly can combine with capital G to form one gamete and small g to form another gamete. So according to this hypothesis, four different parental gametes are possible and each of these gametes have a 1 in 4 chance or a 25% chance of being inherited by the offspring. That is possible only when the traits are inherited independently of one another. So based on this, the Punnett square revealed a completely new set of ratios. This is the Punnett square for a cross between these two genotypes that is the heterozygous genotypes capital T small t, capital G small g. This is a self cross so both parents have the same genotype. 
Now if we were to fill this Punnett square, it would be like this. And the rest of the Punnett square would look something like this when it is filled fully. Take a moment, pause the video if you want to remember the different types of combinations possible in the offspring. If we were to write the phenotypes of each of this genotype here, this would be tall green, tall green again, same tall green and tall green. Similarly, if we were to fill the phenotypes for rest of the Punnett square, this is what it would look like. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see. If you want, you can pause the video here to fully understand the phenotypes of all the possible offsprings. Now with this, if we were to write the phenotypic ratio for the different phenotypes produced here, we'll start with tall green. So there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 possible offsprings out of the 16 total offsprings having tall green traits. So that's 9. Then we have tall yellow. That is 1, 2, 3. So tall yellow is 3. Then we have dwarf green that is 1, 2, 3. Finally, we have dwarf yellow which is just 1. So this ratio 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. Mendel obtained this ratio which made him realize that inheriting one trait is independent of inheriting another trait. So four different gamete combinations are possible in this case. And inheriting of one trait has no effect on inheriting the other trait. And this he formulated as his law of independent assortment.